Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. I'm so glad to see so many of you with us. I see Jan from Washington and Linda from Florida, Corey from Illinois, uh, users from all over the world, not just from America, um, but really from all over. So glad to see you all with us. We have a special session for you today. It's going to be a genealogy Q&A. So all those questions, uh, the things that you've been wondering, you'd like a little expert genealogy advice, now's your chance. Uh, we'll be taking questions from all of you. Uh, hopefully we'll get to as many as we can. So please put your questions in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you today. Um, and before we get to today's show, I wanna let you know about a few things that we have going on at MyHeritage. Our Cyber Week sale, our Cyber Monday sale has been extended and today is the last day. So if you haven't already taken advantage of it, now is the time. It is a fantastic, fantastic deal. Our lowest price ever. Uh, really a great opportunity for you to purchase My Heritage DNA kits for your whole family. So we all know that testing more family members will really help your chances of finding unknown relatives and learning more about your family history, determining which side of the family your different matches are from. So now's your chance. You can buy DNA kits for the whole family at this fantastic price. So uh, we'll be putting a link to that amazing deal in the comment section. Today's the last day, so a few hours left of our Cyber Monday sale. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So please take a look at that. In addition, uh, this is our first year at the holidays where we have My Heritage gift memberships, where we are offering gift memberships. And uh, this enables you to give a My Heritage complete plan to friends or family. Um, people that are starting their family history journey and want to learn more. It's such a great gift for them. Uh, we are offering them at an introductory uh, discount of 50% off. So also fantastic gift. Uh, and the recipient will receive an email with information about how to activate their complete plan. And in case you don't know, the MyHeritage Complete Plan is the best plan we have to offer with access to 12.7 billion historical records, unlimited family tree size, uh, discoveries. There's access to all the MyHeritage photo tools. That's MyHeritage in color and the MyHeritage photo enhancer. So all in all, a really, really fantastic gift for somebody on your list. Um, and the great thing about the gift membership also is you don't have to worry about it getting there in time for the holidays uh, because it arrives by email. <laughs> so uh, a great solution uh, if you still have people that you would like to purchase gifts for. So those are the two things that we have on on our on the list as great gifts for for your family and friends for the holidays. Um, in addition, we'll be giving away a one gift to a lucky viewer today. Uh, all you have to do to enter is leave a comment for us, a comment about uh, something you've discovered using My Heritage, how it's helped you, uh, a feature that you enjoy using on My Heritage, whether it be the My Heritage inconsistency checker or uh, or the way our DNA matches are laid out. So let us know about a different feature that you use on My Heritage and how you enjoy using it. Um, and in addition, anyone who leaves a question for Daniel will be also entered in today's draw. And at the end of today's session, at the end of all the questions that we are able to cover today, we will be giving um, a prize to one lucky winner and they'll be able to choose between a My Heritage DNA kit and a My Heritage Complete Plan. So a really fantastic, fantastic prize. Um, now I'd like to introduce our speaker, uh, My Heritage's expert genealogist, Daniel Horowitz. Hello, Daniel. Hello, Esther. How are you? Always a pleasure to be here with you and with all our followers uh, from Facebook and across the world. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always my pleasure. I enjoy very much uh, these sessions. I enjoy seeing the interest in genealogy and reading the questions. I hope uh, I can give you all the right answers. Uh, yes, I'm the expert genealogist, but I don't know everything. Okay, <laughs> so please be gentle today with me. We, we think you know everything, Daniel, so, so <laughs> we, we, we trust you. <laughs> 
And I know um, I know that a few questions came in earlier, so we do have a whole bunch of questions for you lined up. Um, and anyone who hasn't gotten their question yet, uh, please do put it there in the comments section, and we hope to get to as many as we can. Um, and uh, should we dive in, Daniel? Um, yes, uh, with pleasure. Go ahead. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Let's start with a question here from Jan, and she asks, what are the ways to find family groups between censuses of 1880 and 1900? Hmm. Well, uh, the best practice, and probably that would be for any uh, in-between census that you are looking for, uh, I will try the city directories. Uh, if you have both census or if your family appears in both census, you should have uh, dates and places. So, you, and if the place is the same, well, much easier, obviously, it means that the family did the move. Uh, if the place is different, I will definitely uh, will put those two places in Google Map. I will try to pinpoint how your family may have moved from one place to the other and try to, uh, thanks to the city directories again, uh, trying to see if uh, they owned a business or they were working someplace and they just decided to move to the other place and open the business in this other place. If they are very far away one from the other, consider that they may not have moved in the same um, uh, in the same action meaning probably they moved a couple of years and they live in any place in between um, and then they will kept moving trying to improve their situation until where they uh, they got to the final place where they were uh, living in the second census okay uh let's see we have a question from Bert, um, and he asks, what is the best strategy for isolating the family of an unknown great-great-grandfather? I have more than 4,300 matches um, of different quality. Okay, so we're talking about DNA matches here with the great-great-grandfather? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, I'm pretty sure guessing that you don't have the DNA from that person. You have a DNA from other people, descendants uh, from that great, great grandfather. Um, so I will go to the uh, common matches between you and these other people that will give you also uh, other people related to you through that branch, um, maybe using also the auto cluster to try to find the cluster of those people who are related to you through that uh, ancestor. And we'll start evaluating uh, from the one that has the most common DNA. And uh, probably just uh, by either printing or uh, doing a list by hand. Uh, sometimes pen and pencil are actually our best friends. Um, and just trying to find those individuals, again, that you are matching uh, in common and you know that they are for sure descendants of this uh, ancestor that you are looking for. Christina asks, how do I transfer from ancestry to my heritage? So I'm not sure if she's referring to um, DNA results or to a family tree, uh, both of which you can transfer, actually. So maybe, Daniel, <laughs> if you can cover both uh, both points about how to transfer a family tree and how to transfer DNA results, that would be oh, great. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's an easy one, actually. So uh, let's assume you're talking about family trees. Uh, so the first thing you need to do, and not only from ancestry, but from any other places where you have a family tree, uh, you should be able to download your information in something called JETCOM. JETCOM is the standard format to move family trees from one place to the other. Uh, if you look under probably tree uh, or manage trees, you should be able to export or download that tree. 
And once you have it as a digital file with this JetCon format, you can go into my heritage under the family tree tab, and you will have over there an option that will say import tree. Now, if you are talking about the DNA, uh, also you can import it not only from Ancestry, but from any other company that have done autosomal DNA. Uh, my heritage doesn't support the X or the Y, the MT DNA and the Y uh, DNA test that are also available in the market. So only autosomal. Yes, Ancestry did autosomal, 23andMe is autosomal, so you're good over there. You should be also able to download the digital file of your results from whatever company you are using. Then once you have that filed in your computer, uh, you can simply go into the MyHeritage website under the DNA tab. Uh, and you will have an option that says upload DNA data. Over there, you will uh, be able to find that digital file in your computer. And very important, you will need to assign that DNA kit to somebody in the tree. If it's yourself or any other relative, you need to have it on the tree in order <clears throat> to be able to associate it to the DNA. And if we are already talking about DNAs and family trees, please, please, please try to have a good family tree together with your DNA. That will help you, one, with the theories of family relativities that MyHeritage runs every couple of months, but also when you or any other of your matches will try to find out how you are connected one with the other, uh, having a good family tree there is actually the easiest and the fastest way to, uh, um, to find out how you are connected. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. Um, Cindy left a comment and she said, even though I do not have a specific question today, I enjoy the questions and answers that spark new research avenues in my mind. And that's so true. Exactly the point, um, Cindy, even if, um, even if those of you in the audience don't have your own questions, um, it always helps to hear what other people are asking and the issues that they're facing with their family history. And you never know when it'll come in handy and maybe you'll learn something that'll help you with your research. So, so welcome. Um, and yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why we loved so much going to conferences. Remember those days that we went to conferences? Is to mingle and, and to hear other people's questions and answers. And maybe, yeah, it will help you. This is our, our virtual mingling over here. <laughs> We're doing our own conference here. Exactly. Um, we have this really nice comment from Ron. And Ron said, I was able to find a cousin in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, that I never knew I had. We are in constant contact now. My family loves the colorizing and enhancing of old family photos. So I know um, we discussed this very briefly when I was talking about uh, the features of the MyHeritage Complete Plan. But for anyone who isn't aware, um, these two photo tools are really life-changing. Uh, just so incredible. Um, I just want to spend a minute or two talking about them, if that's okay, Daniel. Um, do you want to maybe introduce the, the photo enhancer and my heritage and color for, for those users who, who don't know them? I would love to do that. And in fact, I can actually show them how and where to do it on the MyHeritage website. Uh, what you're seeing now. One second, is... let me bring it into the screen there. Oh, I, One moment. I, I had the the image here, I thought that, oh, okay, three, two, one. So now you can see, yes, what you're seeing now is under family tree, I just went into uh, colorize photos. And up here, you can upload any image that you have in your computer already digitized, and that will uh, automatically colorize and give you the option to see the image as before and after. The other tool that you're mentioning, Esther, is the enhanced photos. And also here, 
you will be able to upload any photo in your computer and we will apply this technology of enhancement. Uh, you can see how blurry faces, suddenly they, con per they come perfectly clear and you can see them right there. Now, I do know that a lot of people are uploading their pictures again, just to use those two technologies. So let me show you that you really don't need to do that because I am entering now on the photo section and you can see that I have already a lot of photos loaded up there, uh, but not all of them have been colorized or enhanced. You can go into any of those images and you will find always the enhance and the colorize icons right in the top right corner. Let me do it just with this one. You will see how fast this is possibly done. And in the meantime, let me tell you that, oh, you see, that's it, it's done. Uh, I know Esther was mentioning this under the a complete account because my heritage will give you 10 colorizations for free and then you will need to have a, a, a complete subscription. So you see how the image now already is totally in color. You can see the before and after. And if I keep zooming, you will also notice that the faces are a little bit blurry. That is what the Enhance will fix. And that is also another technology that will work just in seconds. And we should have the results right here ready for you. So you don't need to actually upload those photos. You can very easily simply use the photos that you have uploaded and apply the enhance and the colorization method. Uh, now I want to show you this little girl again that I showed you before. You can see the fantastic work that this technology is doing in order to not only apply color, but also bring those faces to life. And if for any reason you don't uh, liked the photo as it is, you can always uh, delete the enhance and the colorized photo and keep the original black and white over there because my heritage didn't touch the original photo. We understand that the, that is a precious treasure for you. Uh, we generate another, a copy of the photo that lives in the same space. And you will notice also in the left corner that my heritage placed a couple of icons there just for you to know that this is not the original photo, that this is actually an image that uh, had a, an, a treatment uh, process, both the colorization or the enhancement. So I heard that if you ask questions, if you leave a comment, or is simply if you tell us your story, uh, success story, hopefully, with any of the features that MyHeritage has, uh, you will be eligible to win this complete subscription that will give you unlimited colorization and unlimited enhancement for all your images. So go ahead, tell us, please, how was your success story or the uh, experience with the images? And in addition, just because we were speaking about uh, photos now and colorizing and enhance them, I see um, a comment here about mixed tiles. So in addition to colorizing and enhancing the photos, you can then choose to print them as wall art. Uh, and it goes through a company called Mixed Tiles that we partnered with. Uh, and it's really so, so easy. You just choose the photos that you would like to print as wall art and they could be the enhanced and colorized version or the original version. 
um, and they get sent to your uh, door, worldwide shipping. You can order them as a gift or order them for yourself. Uh, and we, I saw this very nice comment in the comment section, Daniel, that I'll read out from Rita. And she said, I just received my first mixed tiles using photos that I colorized and enhanced on my heritage today. I cried when I opened the box because the details were so clear. Thank you. You know what, Esther? We should do, uh, um, how did they, they call it? To dare everybody to who orders a mixed style of photos on my heritage to post the unboxing of those, uh, of those photos on the social network and show us really the beautiful uh, job that these guys are doing with your photos. Yeah, really, really fantastic. And another great gift idea for the holidays. So, um, you know. And, and very inexpensive. <laughs> really a great deal. It really is um, a great deal. And you get extra discounts by ordering them through my heritage. So it's definitely worthwhile. Um, and, you know, for your family to see um, all these old uh, historic photos of your ancestors, to put them on the wall, really, really nice, especially um, I think this year of all years when we can't necessarily be so close to one another, uh, purchasing photo tiles is really a perfect idea and a way of, of keeping our loved ones close. So, so just another idea for all of you out there. So let's see, uh, we still have a lot of more comments here. Um, let's see. Okay, um, Nicole asks, can you please share with us the planning of my heritage in the next year? <laughs> so, I promise you that whenever we know it, we will share it with you. <laughs> So maybe um, if you could just say maybe what directions we'll be going in next year that people can can look forward to anything that you can share, Daniel. <laughs> uh, come on, Esther. You know I love to give heads up to people, but uh, I just also love my my job, and I want to keep that also in the twenty one. Um, I do know that we are gonna keep enhance and work on the photo section. Uh, there are a couple of things coming under that path. Uh, Gilad already announced the uh, improved ethnicities. Uh, so that should be a release any moment. And I am also very sure that even after the release, the team is going to keep improving that. Uh, as the year comes. Um, I think I heard also some good news for the mobile. Uh, the mobile is going to uh, get even better. We're going to have more of the features uh, that are in the website on the mobile and uh, the other way around. And of course, that we have and that I have seen already, a long list of records that are going to be published every week. Uh, the team over there is uh, working very hard to bring you those millions and millions of records uh, to add to the database. And the good thing is that those records are not only going to be searchable, but every time that MyHeritage adds those records, we compare them to your family tree and we give you record match. Uh, if I can be honest with you, I don't search that much anymore uh, because I'm a little bit lazy and have a lot of work now on my heritage. Uh, and I enjoy just waiting that email saying that my heritage discovered the mm, record matches for me. And then I am point and directed uh, to the record itself and related records and then i review all of them i extract the information and i keep growing my family tree so uh, so yeah that's uh, more or less uh, what the plans are that i know and i can tell okay great so a lot to look forward to um we are all i think most people on many levels are looking forward to 2021 so especially here at MyHeritage, lots of great things for us all to look 
forward to. Um, a few nice comments here. Uh, Cindy said, the photo enhancement tool really brings facial features to life. It's so true. I think that's really uh, where you see it is on the um, individual faces. You really see a big, big difference with the photo enhancer. So true. Um, and Stephen says, I have enjoyed colorizing and enhancing photos of relatives. Works great when blurry. Uh, and he also asked, uh, I saw a question here, if you'll be able to access, even if you run out of the 10, Stephen said, can you view all photos after the subscription ends? So definitely um, nothing happens to your photos. They're all still there. Uh, even though you do get 10 colorizations and 10 enhancements with a basic account, you'll still be able to see the enhanced and colorized photo. And of course, we never do anything. As uh, Daniel said, we always keep the original. Um, nothing happens to the original. It's always saved on your MyHeritage site. So no worries there. You know what, Esther? Another thing, and I totally forgot about it and I'm seeing here in the comments so let me answer the question already <clears throat> another thing that we will do uh, in 2021 is to run another session of the theory of family relativity so all what you need to do is actually two things make sure that you your and your family DNA is uploaded or is in my heritage and make sure you have a big chubby nice family tree up there and by hopefully the beginning of 2021 you will start receiving new theories and the plan is also to keep running it often uh, so you will always get more and more theories and also uh, probably uh, we are going to improve that section as well um, and for anyone who doesn't know what the theory of family relativity is. We still uh, have those. There may be, there may be some out there. So the theory of family relativity is um, theories that we construct for you about how you may be related to your DNA matches. Uh, and we'll, we'll show you if you have any theories, you may not have any. Um, as Daniel said, the more you add to your family tree, the more details, the more facts, the more people, uh, that'll help your chances at getting more theories. Uh, it helps us figure out how your DNA matches may be related to you. So uh, we hope that we wish you all many, many new theories in the coming year. They're really, really helpful and can make a big, big difference. Uh, to your to figuring out more information about your DNA matches. Uh, Daniel, we have a question here from Bev, and she asks, um, when the theory of family relativity is run, would it be for each person's DNA that I manage? I have passively involved family members who have tested with my heritage, and I think I am asking, should I ask them to let me manage their DNA since I have the most extensive tree on my heritage? Uh, well, yes, Beth. Uh, the theory is run for every DNA kit that it's uploaded or tested on my heritage and against every one of those matches. As Esther was explaining, we, we just take a DNA kit, we see one match, and we try with all the information that we have to find the path between those two, and then we keep going. Uh, so yes, um, the problem is with the second part of your question that once the kid is activated, um, I'm not very sure how they will be able to let you manage that DNA kid. Um, I probably am gonna put in troubles here, my uh, team of support people, but if you write to them, uh, they, if the person that tested write to them and ask uh, to give you the, the control of the DNA, you may have it. But let me give you a tip on that. What I do normally is I, I make sure that I'm the one either uploading or activating the DNA kit. And then um, the person can, of course, subscribe for free to my heritage and open an account. You can invite them to your website. They will be able to see their results, but you also will be the admin of all those DNA kits. And yes, uh, every kid that is on my heritage will receive or should at least be analyzed 
to receive a theory of family relativity. Great. Um, I saw a question. I don't know who it was from. I think I missed the name, but I saw a question before about researching female ancestors, um, about that being a little more difficult. So, Daniel, maybe you could give a few clues, but just so that you know, you all know, uh, we do have a Facebook Live coming up about tracing your female ancestors. So a great, um, a great update there. Uh, that'll probably help you get some more information about tracing those ancestors. Uh, we have a lot of great Facebook Live sessions coming out. We'll be posting in the next day or so um, all the upcoming live sessions that we have for the month of December. So stay tuned to that. Um, and if you have suggestions for other Facebook Lives, different topics you'd like us to cover, please do write in the comment section. We'd love to hear that. Uh, so Daniel, if you have any tips about tracing your female ancestors, that would be great. Well, uh, the first one, and it's what I apply on my own family, is try to find a female ancestor from Latin America or Spain. Uh, because over there, females named both last names, the married and the, and the maiden name in their IDs and every document. And also males actually have the last name of the father of the mother. Now, if you are not so lucky as I am uh, coming from South America, then I will start probably with the marriage certificate. Uh, and the reason for that is because after the marriage is when the name is changed. So uh, whatever document comes after, or even if the person have died, the tombstone very probably will have the married name. The problem is to try to go back to the maiden name. So the uh, marriage certificate should have the maiden name or at least the name of the father and the mother of the bride. Uh, normally you will have also an, an address. And with all that information, you will be able to go and to trace back the female. Once you have the, um, the maiden name, just try to think that the, that person probably study in um, university or any school. Uh, if you go a little bit back, uh, depending on uh, the religion, you may find uh, christening, you may find um, um, church records, definitely you should be able to find a birth record if you have, uh, again, the parents' names and the maiden name. Uh, it should be easy to find the, uh, the birth certificate. And that's practically the only way of going back or, or the easiest way to go back on female ancestors. Now, if you go back enough, uh, probably you will see a lot of the females taking a major role in the economy of the country. So again, city directories may mention the names of the females, uh, especially during World War II, when most of the men had to go uh, into the army and in battles, they were left behind, not only uh, taking care of the house, but also taking care of the stores uh, and the uh, family uh, businesses. So probably you will be able also to find there with the marriage name if they, they married. Um, and that will also lead you to those female ancestors. And yes, if you have more questions, I'm going to be also uh, hearing that Facebook Live and learning a little bit more on how to trace those. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, let's see, we have a question here um, from Carla and she asks, my husband's great grandmother was from Ireland, but her name is very common, Maria Moran. How can I find her information? We do not have the location where she is from. So I guess that's, a common problem, having common names. <laughs> well, yes, uh, I cannot count the amount of John Smiths that there are out there, uh, but I would really start with the immigration record. Uh, whenever and through any place that she came into the country, 
Um, and by the way, if we're talking about United States, yes, everybody have heard about Ellis Island, but taking account that also Philadelphia, Boston, or even Canada was used to go into uh, America. Uh, those who came through Canada then later just crossed the border uh, either by car or by foot and uh, decided to establish in the United States. So if you find the immigration record, you will be able to see not only the date of the immigration, but also the vessel and where it came from. So you need to go back, probably count uh, a couple of weeks or a month. Uh, it's not like today that we travel across the world. Well, we used to travel across the world in a couple of hours. Uh, back in those days, it took more than a couple of, of weeks to get from one side of the country to the other and try to find out information on the port of departure. Uh, over there, the person had to uh, buy a ticket and uh, probably give also information where the person was coming from. So the idea is to trace the person back, to go uh, and to trace their steps back, um, and also need to take in account a little bit of history. Uh, if you see immigration records, you will find that most of the people that came to the United States Actually, they're saying either Poland or Russia. Uh, and the reason for that is because those were the biggest countries in that time, but that not necessarily means that they were actually from that place. Same with Ireland or Scotland. It was probably easier to just mention a big country, uh, to mention the place uh, of other peoples in the ship and uh, not to be exact. Uh, some of them were just escaping from their past or looking for uh, a better future. And they didn't want to connect that match to their origins. Now, also, if the person has uh, a common name, uh, still they have parents and the name of the parents may be different. So even if you have a John Smith, uh, John Smith's father or your John Smith father is not the same of my John Smith father. So the other family members, brothers, sisters may be also useful to find the exact people that you're looking for. Well, talking about immigration, uh, Shelley asks, what are the ports in Canada? I found my ancestors crossing from Canada to the States. So everyone, as you said, knows of Ellis Island, uh, but what about Canada? Where are the ports there? Uh, well, I have to admit, I'm not uh, that expert on Canadian genealogy, uh, but Esther, you will correct me, but Ontario, has uh, a very big port, if I remember. Uh, so probably I would look on that area. Uh, try to find even today uh, the big ports that were used today. Um, in fact, I remember that there is a immigration museum. Um, I think it's, it's called, or you may Google it and find it by Pier 51. I think my, my family, I think, um, immigrated to Canada and they came in through Halifax. Halifax, exactly. That's yeah. the place. Yes. Uh, so there is a museum in, Hal in Halifax. I, w I had the pleasure. Canada. Uh, you yeah. just need to think that those big ships uh, needed a big port where to uh, land. And, uh, and like if they, if they are not still today in use, which I doubt, uh, they are very n common knowledge, uh, historically speaking. So just uh, Google it. My family got some great, uh, great records. Uh, also, they came in through Halifax and we found some great census records, Can a lot of great Canadian census records on my heritage. So uh, definitely worth looking into. And I see we had a bunch of people answering Port of Montreal, Port of Metro Vancouver, 
Prince Rupert, St. John, Halifax. Um, so a lot of different options here. Um, definitely easily accessible information. And, uh, and another tip, and, and here goes the push to the Ontario Genealogical Society. Uh, my very good friends from there, they have also a lot of records. They will point you to the right place and to the right uh, information. So Ontario Genealogical Society, uh, Google to find the exact URL and just tell them that, yep, Daniel sent me. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so I just want to remind everyone at this point uh, that first of all, this Facebook Live and all of our Facebook Lives are available on the My Heritage Facebook page under the video section. So you can rewatch this one. You can watch all of our previous ones. As I said, if you have suggestions for upcoming Facebook Lives, different topics that you'd like to see covered, please do let us know. Leave a comment in the comment section. We see them all. <laughs> we might not be able to answer every single one, but we do see them all. So thank you. Uh, and for anyone that has questions that we weren't able to answer, uh, you can go to the My Heritage Knowledge Base. Uh, we'll put a link in the comment section. There are lots of articles, webinars, how-to videos. So lots and lots of different resources if you have questions uh, or, or even if you don't have questions like some of uh, the viewers here today who just want to browse uh, and learn a little bit more about my heritage products and features or genealogy in general. So please do check it out. We will, um, we, we will post a link in the comment section and to, our, to the My Heritage Knowledge Base and you can take a look there. So um, if it's okay with you, Daniel, I'll choose a winner now for the, today's competition. Be my guest because I hate to have that responsibility on my shoulders. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So today's winner um, of either a My Heritage DNA kit or a My Heritage Complete Plan, both excellent, excellent prizes, uh, either one that is chosen. Uh, so today's winner is Fiona Blake. And Fiona wrote to us, I found my great uncle's first World War record, born in London, UK, moved to USA, joined the Canadian New Brunswick Kilties. Who knew? 42 pages of fascinating reading, providing useful addresses to follow up on. Very, Congre very nice discovery there, Fiona. Amazing. Congratulations, Fiona. So we'll be in touch with you through private message to claim your prize. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. Uh, and it looks like we have so many questions. We are definitely going to have to do a follow-up session, Daniel. I have no problem. I really enjoy interacting with all of you. Uh, so whenever you need it, Esther. Great. So, so everyone stay tuned to the My Heritage blog blog.myheritage.com. We'll be posting a schedule with all of our upcoming online events. Uh, we hope that you can join us at many of them, and we hope to see you all there. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you again, Daniel.